head out at 6 a.m. to the Tesla Service Center. All right, so here I am at a gas station and I'm filling up my Tesla. I'm at a Wawa, but check out what Wawa has. A whole row of Tesla superchargers. So right now my car is getting some free electricity on this beautiful Tesla supercharger. So I got my loaner vehicle and I get to go home. I'll be doing zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds. Oh my God. driving itself so the only thing I'm gonna do now is just turn on the turn signal and you can see the car is actually changing lanes itself and watch when the semi comes up watch what the uh, screen here shows the semi on the screen okay I'm on a country road there's no cars around I just want to show you the autopilot system it's engaged It's picking up the speed limit signs and it's lowering the speed itself. And I have my hand close by, I'm not touching the wheel though. But you can see it's gonna negotiate this turn. So let's see how this, this does. So it's steering itself, steering itself. It's telling me to apply force to the wheel. Now I'll let it continue on. If you don't apply force to the wheel every few seconds, it will get angry and say you cannot use autopilot until the next time you restart the car. Slow traffic, it does pretty good. Really bad route. Doesn't even seem to phase it. Oh, it's telling me to touch the steering wheel. Okay. It took its foot off the brake. I guess it doesn't have a foot, but the computer accelerated all by its own. It actually picks the right lane. I'm not steering, my hands are here. Um, it picks the right lane. What I've learned in the 100 miles I've been driving it, apparently it needs the lines. It likes the lines. If, this, if you have a road that does not have the white lines or yellow lines, it, it does not give you autopilot. see the other cars around me. It's braking, accelerating, it does lane changes by itself. Okay, so after driving the P90D uh, loaner car for two days, uh, what do I think of the autopilot system and uh, a faster car? This car is 0 to 60 in 4 seconds, that car is 0 to 60 2.5 seconds. Um, to be honest, uh, I don't miss the extra speed. I think four seconds is plenty for most people. Um, the autopilot, the adaptive cruise control part of autopilot, I think is really neat. Uh, that, is, that could save your life. Um, the autopilot, um, I kind of like to drive, so it really doesn't, um, I don't need that as much. But the adaptive cruise control, I think, is a lifesaver for a lot of people. It really is. Um, but like I said, I love my car. 
There's not a lot of brown or mocha Teslas out there. So uh, it's rear wheel drive. It has the bit staggered wheels, uh, which are bigger wheels in the back. I just, I just love this car, even though it's a older 2013 uh, Tesla. Here's what's cool. Sitting in your Tesla, watching a video of you. Making a Tesla video while you're recording a future Tesla video. Hey, what are you guys doing? You guys are playing together, it's cute. So in six months that I've had the car. Punch it in three, two, one. So after upgrading an older 2013 car, which does not have autopilot or sensory or any of that stuff, what is the benefit of going from MCU1 to MCU2? Okay, so this display over here on the driver was leaking fluid. It was, the LCD was coming apart. It was leaking all around the edge, so it had to be replaced. So that was replaced. That's a 12 inch screen on the drivers, which is much crisper and higher resolution than the old display. The large 17 inch display was also replaced and it is much crisper and higher resolution. But the big thing is the snap, the snappiness and the speed of the processor. So before, if I went here and I just clicked on the web browser, which is right here, and I pulled up Google, that would take, you know, I can't even tell you how long, maybe four minutes. It was insanely slow. Now it's instantaneous. Now, if I go to entertainment, the games, just pulling that up would take forever. And then, of course, there's a lot more games here than, than the, what there was before. So I'll come in a little closer. Um, you can see you've got um, all these games here. I'm not going to go in each game. That's a lot to take take in. But there's some sim-type games and, uh, you know, regular board games. There's a um, 3D beach buggy racing, like a Mario Kart-style game. A lot of 80s arcade-type games. Um, and then you go into the theater, which gives you Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, Twitch, and basically videos on how to use your car, which are, which are pretty cool. Um, in the toy box, there's pretty much the same thing as the 2013 MCU-1, except this Trax is new, which is a basically like a recording studio. You can record music, basically be your own DJ kind of thing. Oh, one other thing I forgot is car karaoke. Um, this is set your beats per minute and all that cool stuff. Um, I'm going to get out of this. But see how it just transitioning would, would take forever in my, in my old car. The navigation is so much uh, snappier and quicker. Um, let's see what else. If you go to music and you go to car, car karaoke, um, you go here and you just say you just, I'm just going to click on this. So because of copyright, I'm not sure if I'm even allowed to play the music, but it does play the music and there's the words go across. Uh, strangely enough, it's not the artist actually singing. It's a, it's almost like a cover. Like we have some kind of studio that's producing all this. But as far as what is in the karaoke, there are tons and tons and tons and tons. Like even children's stuff, which my kids actually will like this. Uh, twinkle, twinkle, little star. I'm sure that's not copyrighted. So you can see that you can, and then this you can do while you're driving too, so which is kind of nice. So all in all, I think the MCU screen upgrades were worth it. Um, Tesla lower the price, which is great. Because this would have been, you know, three grand a couple years ago. Now it's a lot cheaper. The last thing I want to show you is the uh, navigation upgrade. So, for example, before this would take five minutes, but I'm going to uh, do it with the new MCU. Navigate to Atlanta. 
you can see over here it's going to draw it over here it's going to pull it up uh, it's going to give me downtown atlanta i'm just going to say okay now mind you my car has a much smaller battery and much longer recharge times than a new tesla i can still get to atlanta obviously but it's going to take more charging stops for me but you can see just how fast that pulled up i mean before that would take forever um, just to calculate all this information because it gives me uh, 5% when I get to Lake City, which my battery is only halfway charged right now. It's charging. Um, Tipton, I got to stop. Macon, I got to stop. 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Um, mind you, this is an old car. It only charges at 100 kilowatts. New cars charge at 250 kilowatts. So this is a very slow way to road trip. But it is doable, and it's not too bad. And now that I have all this cool entertainment stuff, I could do it. So here's kind of a cool experiment. I'm going to say, navigate to Los Angeles, California. Now, just to pull this up and to do this quick calculation, to grab all the superchargers would have taken, I mean, 10 minutes, maybe 10 minutes along. Um, but this new uh, processor is so much faster. And you can see all the supercharging stops I'd have to make if I drove across country, um, which actually comes out to 3,000 miles, I believe. Uh, if I scroll down to the bottom, I'm sorry, 2,000 mile way off. Uh, 2,472 miles, and I could do that in 36 hours. Um, now this car, like I said, only has about 200 miles of highway range. Um, the new cars, of course, can go 400 miles, so don't judge Teslas on my car, which is a 2013 uh, Model S. Uh, but you can see it is doable. You can do it. You can drive cross country. Now, the cool thing, I can drive cross country for free, but like I said, at 100 kilowatts, it's very slow versus, uh, you know, the new cars are 250 kilowatts.